I, I save my best material for off camera, or for <laughs> off recording, or behind the scenes. Sheldon, that's we not... ever release the the lost tapes of the You Killed It podcast. <laughs> if we had a lost tapes or a, like the shit we should have played, we would be in <laughs> so much trouble. <laughs> and not not in like the challenge community, but just like in life, like the things yep. you and I have said about our careers. Oh no! The amount of times I've been like, "Wait, am I recording it? No, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> good. Yep, yep, yep." But S- speaking, big things to get to here. I'm fired up, man. That's good. Speaking of, let's do our introductions, and then we'll break down this very exciting episode of the challenge. I'm John Chidley Hill. And I am, once again, Sheldon Alexander, fired up to tell you why Josh is the dumbest player in the history of the challenge. (laughs) I love it. Spicy takes. And this is... Right off the bat. Let's go. (laughs) He's a tool. And this is You Killed It, the podcast, (laughs) the the challenge, talking about War of the Worlds 2 (laughs) slash making fun of Josh. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Let us begin from the top, my friend. Um, wow. So this episode picks up where they left off. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, immediately after George's elimination, they're walking back into the house. The Americans immediately have a team meeting. And just off the hop, I just want to say, I think Leroy is really quietly coming into his own this season. I think he's showing a lot of leadership that he previously wouldn't do. And not... Not political leadership, but just being like, guys, we're a team. We have to have meetings. We have to talk about things. We have to air our grievances. We need to be on the same page. And so he says, guys, from here on out, no more cheering for the Brits when they're in an elimination. And he specifically calls out your boy Josh for cheering on (laughs) Georgia. Smashley was also not impressed. She's siding with Leroy on this. What did you think? So here's the thing, right? I, I totally agree with what Leroy's saying in theory, and I understand it. And the thing is, there is a way where you can play the game, play the game within the team of Team USA, and also, you know, not want to see one of your friends on the other side get eliminated. Like, that is possible. I don't think, you know, and I know Wes came in to say this, and it's just because it's the messenger, you're not going to believe Wes where you think there's ulterior motives, but he is right. Like once you start trying to lay rules that are like, you can't cheer for this person or you can't cheer for that person. Like it's a slippery slope of just leading to things being more ridiculous than they already are. Right. Yep. But to me, that's not even the highlight of of, of what's going on here, because to me, it's just like, why is this even turning into a thing? Like it, it is pretty dumb just because, you know, if, Josh wasn't cheering for Georgia, does that mean we think that he wouldn't be siding with her? Do you know what I mean? Like, the fact that you're cheering for the person loudly or keeping it to yourself doesn't change your motives one way or the other. So what difference does it make? I agree. I don't think it makes a huge difference. We have a listener question, though, right off the hop. I enjoy those. Raven Ramsey wants to know, why is it not okay for Josh to cheer for Georgia... But we all know damn well that Cam would cheer for Kaylee and all of Team America would be cheering for Kyle. I also have to point out, I think all the Americans would also be cheering for CT, just to add to Raven's point. Facts, because they'd want him to win and hopefully join their team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I don't. I agree I've, with Raven, or what she sort of implied, and Josh says it too. They're being hypocrites. Like, Mm -hmm. Wes would obviously be cheering. Turbo was cheering. Well, not cheering, but was giving Georgia advice, which is perhaps even worse. Like, if you're going to be nitpicking, like, shouting advice at someone is more effective than cheering, you know? Like, totally agree. Um, so. But at the end of the day, you know what, though, John? I'm here for any Josh slander. So as much as, like, I might disagree with what, you know, is being said, and I might, like, agree with Josh's point, the fact that they're having a meeting to call out Josh, I'm here for that. Because as Ashley said, right, and this is actually my line of the episode, but Ashley says, I guess Josh and George are BFFs now, a.k.a. Josh trying to get into her panties. (laughs) That's true. 
It's I mean, it's just, come on, Josh. Like, right here, I knew where this episode was going. Right here, I knew exactly where this episode was going. And Josh, despite trying to, like, stand up for himself, he just never seems fully confident in how he's... No. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it always seems like such a cover-up. And then all of a sudden, it's like something goes off in his brain where he's like, I should be a little louder now. Yeah. Even though he doesn't know what he's actually saying. I don't know. I well, don't know. well, I do... Just, sorry, just to circle back to Raven's question. I think the reason sorry. why Josh got <laughs> I'm singled out... i fired up. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, never I'm sorry, apologize. Raven. Um, <laughs> we're Canadians. We apologize too much. The reason why... Josh got singled out, I think, is for the simple fact that he's fucking annoying. And he's exactly he's loud. Right? Totally like, true. They were all like I think that Giorgio was I know Giorgio was way more popular than Big T. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that they were all like rooting for Georgia. Just like on an instinctive level, you see a competition, like on an emotional level. Like if you're at medieval times like you're you're just gonna latch on to cheer for someone for whatever reason right like that's what most people do i'm sure they're yeah. all mostly cheering for georgia it's just that josh is obnoxious yeah yeah and he and he alluded to that fact like not him being obnoxious but just him being kind of the easy target right it's easier to call him out and he's right um you know and then this whole sentiment comes up about, well, maybe to see whose side people are really on, we should make one of the people who are cheering for the other side be the speaker. Yeah. And your man's Josh puts up his hand right away and says, yeah, I'm willing to prove myself. Josh says he'll do it. He'll be the speaker. What do you think of this strategy first off, just in terms of actually saying, well, hey, if you want to prove your loyalty, be the speaker and put up their two best players. What do you think of the strategy, and what do you think of Josh stepping into that role? I think it's always worth your while to be the speaker in this game. Like, I think it's been proven that whoever is the speaker is really calling the tune, at least for that week. Mm -hmm. It's also a little bit of foreshadowing. Very helpful if it's your gender's elimination week. Like, for if sure. you're a woman and it's the female elimination week, you should want to be the speaker. <laughs> like, it guarantees that you're safe. It lets you call the tune, right? Um, yeah. And just to tack on to what you said, in significantly, Josh agrees with the room <laughs> that what they're going to do is put up the Brits' strongest player. Now, Which is a very key point, right? Like, that is the condition of this whole plan. The whole plan is be the speaker, prove to us you're loyal by putting up their two strongest players yes. or whoever their strongest players are. That's the whole basis of the plan. And realistically, their strongest male players, it's a pretty short list. Right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's, Pretty much. Like, there's not that many. Like, there are options, but the reality is, based off what you just saw, the dude that came in second in last year's final is on their team. Yeah. It, the dude that came in first is on your team. <laughs> it's pretty much Theo, or no one really said his name, which I think is significant, but surely CT is also one of their strongest players. For sure. For sure. For sure. Anywho, we then fast forward a little bit. Um, it seems like people have... Oh, sorry. I don't want to... I was going to skip straight to uh, Bear and Laurel. But really... No, there's some drama on the UK side. Building. That's right. Bubbling. Uh, Bubbling. And it starts with the bromance of Rogan and Joss. Yes. And there's basically a divide in the house, right? Like, let's see. Let's say... Uh, I know you're a wrestling fan, John. So the tag team of... Theo and Bear versus Rogan and Josh, essentially, right? Yes. That's kind of the the sides, and then everyone else kind of fills in on either side. But what sense does it make for the UK team to be this divided this early? Is it just as simple as they feel the heat already and kind of know that 
if we keep losing, we got to have sides? Like, is that is that it? Yeah, I don't understand why the Brits are already at each other's throats. Like, it should be more like, hey, we're getting our asses handed to us by the Americans. Mm-hmm. Let's, like, stop losing. You know, like, they're sort of <laughs> trying to run before yes. they can walk. Yeah, like, let's focus on keeping our best players. Let's identify who our best players are. Yeah. Uh, let's put aside our bullshit and win a fucking daily competition, you know? <laughs> Sounds simple, right? Sounds simple. It but should of be course, simple. It's a challenge, and that's not what happens. <laughs> but, John, what does happen on the challenge? Uh, when you have beautiful people in the house together... What is something that happens on this challenge show? Uh, people hold each other's feet <laughs> by holding toes, which brings hey. me to a listener question. <laughs> okay. John Chidley Hill wants to know, Sheldon, have you ever <laughs> held someone's foot with your foot? No, I have not. Um, I know that, you know, foot fetishes are a thing. I I didn't realize it was a thing. I mean, probably in the sports world is popularized by a man's Rex Ryan when that (laughs) whole scandal broke with him and his wife. But I mean, I don't know. It's it's bare running game and Laurel's picking up what he's putting down. And, you know, you see we called this. You could see where it was going, right? Like the producers have done a good job of dropping all these hints and you know, they go from playing some weird footsies, like hugging with their toes thing, or making out with their toes, to <laughs> then actually making out in the bathroom and Laurel complimenting Bear, telling him that she thinks that he's a total package. <laughs> this whole thing is so odd and weird. And I mean, there's two things. Let's let's get the jokes out of the way and then we'll get to the game side of this, right? Okay. This Bear and Laurel showman's like, <laughs> are you here for it? As we see more and more of this, the toe making out and all. I like I like Bear so much more this season, and oh, okay, I love Laurel. Mm-hmm. I did. You no, know I'm Team Laurel for sure. Yeah, I did think it was funny that she said you're the total package, but then she like listed off what the total package includes. It was a very short package. It was, it was, she was like, you're so sexy and you have a great face, which are related ideas. And then like, that was, that was, I mean, maybe, maybe they got it. I think she said he has a great edit. body, right? <laughs> Sorry? She said he has a great body and oh, a great face. No? Yes. A great body and a great face, which <laughs> to be technical, the face is part of the body. Just saying. <laughs> Thanks for that breakdown of anatomy. John's Anatomy. Is that the new show? <laughs> yes, this John's fall Anatomy. On ABC? <laughs> so I th- I don't know. It's cute. And like so far, I don't think it's clouded Laurel's game too much. It's worth noting. Really? I well, okay. I don't think so. I mean, maybe we'll okay. maybe that'll come up later on. Dun dun yeah, dun. Let's let's stick a, a pin in that one for now because yeah, I got some some strong takes here but on on what laurel's laurel's moves are here and you know what i'm not the only one oh cara maria right cara is quick to tell the like you know in her confessional she's saying she doesn't really trust laurel at all and we know they got beef but she points to the fact that laurel's game is always somehow sometimes unpredictable yeah and her loyalty sometimes strays and that again was the producers dropping dropping some seeds, right? In terms of what's gonna continue to blossom by the end of this episode. But the main point, Leroy again, who you're talking about, coming strong so far, right? I'm trying to get his political game up a little more. But he's having a conversation with Ashley, Polly, and Kara about who they trust, who they don't trust, and Yeah, like right here, I'm like, okay, is Laurel really going to allow like whatever's going on here to cloud her judgment? Or is this just some old school, you know, old school, I don't fuck with Wes forever, right? Like right there, I'm already trying to see where this is going. And I'm like, okay, okay, duly noted. But meanwhile, 
another team UK meeting that fails. <laughs> yes. So again, CT, this is why I say I agree that Theo in terms of competition is the strongest competitor on the UK. Mm-hmm. But CT is the one that calls this meeting and it's just smart leadership. Right? Like let's get everyone yeah. on the same page. Let's like hash it out like let's have a game plan in case we win and And, i mean they they try (laughs) they try and then bear says that if the brits win he'll be the speaker and makes the point that they can if they win and he's the speaker he'll nominate wes who clearly has a bunch of alliances sorry i'm getting ahead of myself he says that he'd nominate wes Rogan, who is an ally of Wes, immediately pushes back and says, like, well, what's one have to do with the other? Like, why do you have to be the speaker for us to do that? And then Bear made, I thought, a very good point that if he's the one to nominate Wes, it doesn't change the house dynamics because yeah. he and Wes already hate each other. So, like, it's not like Wes's alliance, which they know exists, is going to be gunning for Bear no matter what. So at least they're not putting any additional heads on the chopping block, which I thought was very logical of Bear. For sure. Like, I I thought it was a well-made point. I see why Rogan was pushing back, but it was a fair point. It is a great point by Wes, but I also see the point of the rest of the team in the sense that you don't want to put the power in the hands of a wild card like Bear. No. Which what we learn is a mistake of the U.S. team, right? Yeah. And so regardless of whatever you're trying to do, you know, there still has to be a method to the madness in terms of who becomes a speaker. Yeah, it's all fine to say, hey, let's put up our strong player or let's put up someone who's going to make all the tough moves. But at the end of the day, can you trust that that person is going to do what's in the best interest of your team? Yeah. And And I mean... When it comes down to it, can you trust anything that Bear might do? The answer is no. no. So I don't blame the rest of the team for, you know, they have their huddle up and, you know, their uh, group cheer as Bear walks off sulking. But, I mean, at the end of the day, what does he expect? How does he expect his team or anyone on the show to take him seriously? Well, and that's what's funny is the proof is in the pudding, right? Like their criticism of Bear is that he's too emotional and unpredictable. He takes, like, what should be, like, a strategic discussion so badly that he storms off and is really angry and upset and has to, like, be consoled and there's, like, three or four of them, like, talking to it. Like, Bear, if you had been like, okay, you know what, if that's the group consensus, Idris, that's who ended up being the theoretical speaker for the Brits... He's like, okay, yeah. that's the group consensus. I accept it, but Idris, I still think you should go after Wes. Like, if he yeah. does, does that, it's going to slowly change the mood of the Brits. Where they're like, oh, look at Bear being, like, a reasonable, like, logical person. Because I think Imagine Bear... Imagine that. I actually do think Bear is a good competitor. Like, he's stuck around totally. a long time. It's just he's so emotional and as everyone has said, irrational. Like, you never know what you're going to get with him. Well, the other thing people have pointed out about Bear this season is he, and he's acknowledged it himself, he's done a bit of training in said off-season of the challenge, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we are seeing a different Bear so far, but I would still be on the side that he needs to earn my trust a little more. So I I get it. I totally get it. Let's get to the challenge, because this challenge was pretty cool, no? What did you make of this challenge? Uh, Paddle... This challenge... Sorry, go ahead. Paddle wheel puzzle? Yeah, (laughs) I want to say... I just think this is funny. This is one of my, like, little side notes that I take from, like, a production standpoint. I think it's so funny that TJ will be like, and today we're playing, dramatic pause paddle wheel puzzle and then you hear all the contestants all the competitors go whoa what as if they know what it is <laughs> as if they're like oh man not paddle wheel puzzle i've heard about this you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> like they're oohs and ahs it's yeah. so funny because like those three words in that combination doesn't tell you shit 
But no, they're like, oh my god! All. Like, <laughs> not at all. And you know what's funny? Even after he starts explaining it, I was still kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> but essentially, there's a huge wheel, and I think if you describe it as like the hamster wheel, yeah, that kind of makes it gives it a little more. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And there are 16 puzzle pieces inside the paddle wheel and basically it's just a huge pole that's attached to a combination lock and all the competitors have to look at a board pick out a four digit code each try to remember one and then that coincides with one of the puzzle pieces in said hamster wheel now you go into said hamster wheel while it's spinning around with everybody in it and you have to unlock the combination while the wheel is spinning you get one of the the flags or sorry, it becomes a part of a flag, the puzzle piece. Each piece is a part of a puzzle, which becomes a flag of your country. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, you got it. You nailed it. So my question for you off the bat, because I thought about this right away. What would your strategy be for remembering the code, the four-digit code? Well... It's not that hard to remember four digits. Am I wrong? (laughs) Okay, you might be right, but let's assume that you're right. But the thing that I, you're totally right. Four digits should be pretty easy for you to remember. But the one thing that I always try to remind myself about some of these challenges is that even though it might look somewhat easy, us watching it, or, you know, even if it looks kind of hard, I always think there's another level a couple levels up in terms of degree of difficulty in terms of actually doing it yes while trying to remember whatever it is that you need to remember so four digits whatever i still think that i needed to come up with a little something for me to remember and because of the sports background i would have went with athlete numbers yeah yeah that makes right? sense so like if my code was 2384 in my mind i would just be lebron randy moss yeah right 2384 i'm gonna remember that I don't need to remember the actual numbers. Is I know it's easier to remember LeBron and Moss. Wait, right? wait, 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 wait. 23 and you think LeBron James? <laughs> no. I <listen>. Wow. <laughs> wow, Sheldon. Uh, that's you pretty just, funny. You just got exposed. That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that call out. I really do. I'm disappointed in myself. I'm, I'm, I really am. I'm a... Not disappointed. I'm just no. I'm, I'm disappointed hurt. in myself. I think I'm hurt for. <laughs> I am disappointed in myself. I really am. Wow, that is funny. Um, that is really weird. I actually like typed that out too. Wow, <laughs> is that weird? It wasn't an off the cuff thing either. No. But I feel like we just got like a deep look into your psychology about wow. that you secretly hate Michael Jordan. Now we know. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mike, I apologize. I'm sorry <laughs> to all basketball fans of my generation. I I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. All listeners to our Ball on Blast podcast, <laughs> Wrap It Up podcast, all the people that listen to me for my basketball knowledge. I apologize. So- I'm sorry. Speaking of bizarre things to say, Georgia's, okay. Georgia says that she's never been in anything spinning before, but she was once in her dryer to warm up, but it wasn't on. What? Georgia? I mean, sometimes I wonder if there's, you know, some cultural differences here. Like their that, drugs like, are better are better than ours. Like, what is she talking about? That's definitely a possibility. I mean, that's definitely a possibility. But sometimes when some of the things they say, the slang, I'm just kind of like, you know what? I'm not going to put too much thought into this. I'm just going to write this off as maybe it's a UK thing, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, what plausible explanation is there for that? Like, what? That doesn't seem real. Also. Aren't dryers in the United Kingdom super small? Like, I know she's I a no petite idea. person, but, like, aren't they tiny? I, I, I got nothing. Like, I, I literally have nothing. It's just like, what? I have to say, so I, as you know, I'm not a big Johnny Bananas guy. But the, 
the thing that I respect about Johnny the most is that he's so good at game theory. Like, he's so yes. good at seeing what the critical thing to do to win a competition is. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, totally. Especially with daily competitions. And he really comes through, uh, maybe not as fast as the Americans would like, but he says, guys, what we're going to do is everyone, like, pick one of these bars, one of these poles, and one by one, like, shout out what your memorized number is, and we're all going to check the polls at the same time. Yeah. And so once they start doing that, the Americans really pick up the pace, because at first they're really struggling. They're all over the place. It made a yeah. huge difference. Well, think about how difficult it would be, right? Because not only are you trying to navigate your way through this hamster cage, but you're also trying to navigate through the poles, which are awkwardly, you know, almost like a maze, let's say. Yeah, and other people who are falling and throwing up in Zach's case. Yeah, and it's slippery and all these things. So your chances of trying to find the right pole that has your common, like that's insane. So it was a great theory. And again, it's back-to-back weeks where Johnny Bananas games the system. Yep. And is it just as simple as his years and years of experience of playing all these games that he kind of he might not have played this game in particular but he might have played something similar to it in all of his years on the challenge so he kind of knows the shortcuts is that it do you think uh, I think he just has a good mind for this and maybe you're right it is experience but he's always just been good at sort of seeing through the mm-hmm. like the the noise I guess yeah and, and, for sure. and, and figuring out, like, I'll never forget. I forget which season it was. Maybe it was Invasion of the Champions, I want to say. Okay. But he, uh, there was that one competition where they had to scratch the paint off glass to get the numbers to do a combo lock. And they were... I vaguely remember it. And they'd gotten through three of the four numbers. And then he was like, don't bother wasting your time scratching off the paint. Like, with one, like, of the combos left, let's just try every number. Like, it's faster to go through zero through nine yeah. than it is to scratch sure. off paint. Like, he's just really cool. good at seeing those, I don't want to say shortcuts, because I think they're within the rules of the game. But, like, he's good at seeing those opportunities. Totally. And very important that you brought up the rules of this game. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was a pro uh, level segue. I don't mind telling you. Well played. Well played. I mean, so the US team does pretty well. And I'm going to say something that we have no way of proving, right? Mm-hmm. But I was wondering if the UK could hear the strategy that the US team was using. And it appears that they <coughs> couldn't because they didn't use the same strategy. They all kind of stuck to. We all have a number. Let's try to find which one works for our combination number. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to guess that this was just creative editing to make it seem as if the UK team was like way <coughs> ahead of the US team. Like, I bet you that it was probably closer than we think. But the oh. way that it was cut together made it seem like the UK team was way ahead because I just don't trust the fact that they were able to really find the correct uh, polls that quickly. Like, I, I just don't trust it. And there's no way for me to know that. There's no way. Like, I'm just I'm just straight guessing and, like, not trusting the UK team to be that quick, right? Maybe that's it. I don't know. But either way, UK team, the way that we see it anyways, they do really well. And, you know, I guess uh, (laughs) they're cooking. They're doing pretty well. But they get right to the very end, and they're struggling on a couple numbers and or a couple of the pulls. And then what happens, John? Your man, Theo, uh, realizes that it's just like a shitty lock like you would have had in middle school and (laughs) that he could just break it. So he just applies force and snaps the lock by sort of uh, pulling on the pole and using leverage to to bust it open. And they do it for two locks. 
Yes. So all the Brits think they've won because TJ says that the Brits completed the puzzle the fastest. D and Rogan immediately kiss in front of everyone. Way to play it cool, guys. <laughs> Someone, I don't know who, runs away with his ass hanging out. Bear drops to his knees in front of the Americans, just screaming. Like, guys, act yep. like you've been there before. Holy shit. Like, one battle does not make the war. And, yeah. and then what happens, <laughs> Sheldon? Well, the celebration is... <clears throat> The celebration is super over the top, right? Mm -hmm. As you just mentioned. And then TJ, as only TJ Lavin does, right? Which is why he is the man. All of a sudden, he pulls out two combination locks and just sort of dangles them. <laughs> right? <laughs> just, just sort of dangles them for a second. And they cut back to the crew, the teams, and they kind of look puzzled as if, what's that? <laughs> right? TJ holds up the locks and says, these are from the Brits. And if you know one thing about me, it's that I hate cheaters. <laughs> Which I thought was just a great line See, and an incredible call out. I, I, sorry, I gotta stop you there, though. If I know one thing about TJ Lavin, it's that he hates quitters. This, this information about cheaters, it's new. Here's the thing, though. I would assume from what we know from TJ that he would also hate cheaters. That's fair. I don't I can't I can't pinpoint like a specific other game in which this has happened in in which he's called someone out for cheating. But from what we know from TJ, he's a stand-up guy, right? He's about the rules, he's about ethics and honor. He's about the code. <laughs> TJ would not be for cheaters. We would know that. We should know that, right? Yeah, that's fair. Calls out the Brits for cheating because there's not one but two broken combination locks. And he says, the U.S., you guys actually win. And now the celebration is on and they are just returning the favor, dancing, giving a, a bear a good noogie. I, <laughs> right? like, I have to give Johnny Bananas credit twice in the span of like five minutes. He like move for move replicated what bear did like dropping to his knees and screaming <laughs> yes. someone else had their ass hanging out like i love that the americans took note of who was doing what and immediately oh, yeah. broke into doing the exact same thing and like no one like you didn't have two people dropping to their knees and screaming like yeah i don't know if they like how they coordinated so quickly but the, I love that they did almost like a shot-for-shot shot reenactment of how the Brits celebrated. Like, so good. Really good. Can I say something, though? I feel sorry for Bear in this instant. It's right? Because he didn't cheat. No. Nope. <laughs> so how would you know that someone else on your team cheated and they just made you look like a total tool? <laughs> because you're just happy because you finally won. Like, you've been getting your ass kicked since the season started. And now finally you think you got to win and you're celebrating and you're going to celebrate over the top because you're on the challenge <laughs> and you finally won. And then, boom. I actually kind of felt bad for Bear in that moment. M maybe, like, I don't know what's going on. I'm agreeing with Polly and Cara Maria. I'm I'm feeling sorry for Bear. Like I don't know what's I'm I'm bigging up Johnny Bananas for being a great uh, game player. I don't know what's going on with me this season right now, but this is weird, John. This is weird. <laughs> this is strange territory, and the so, look on CT's face is so good because he yeah. he's just so like he's actually laughing to himself. Where he's just like, oh my god, I am surrounded by idiots. And he says in confessional <laughs> that when he joined the Brits, he was kind of hopeful. Like, maybe yeah. they could, like, rally and, like, really sort of shock the world. But now it's starting to take a toll on him. Yeah. <laughs> it's super funny. Uh, but right when this happened, okay, and we kind of knew that Theo was the one that did this. Well, my question to you, which I found interesting that it never even came up, but should it have been on the table that whoever cheated should be the one to go in to the elimination? Yeah. I guess, I mean, I don't know if the Americans... Oh, you mean like amongst the Brits? Amongst the Brits. I'm not, mm, I'm not sure that they really know who cheated, though. 
Although, like, they could have put it out. That's what I was asking. Like, yeah. they could have figured it we out. We knew. Yeah, like, we knew who did it. But I just mean amongst themselves. Like, I wondered, because I thought that was an interesting decision to be made. And obviously, you know, I feel like at some point someone would have asked. Like, the discussion would have been had at least off camera, right? Yeah. I feel like amongst themselves they must have known. And to me, the decision being made that, oh, no, well, it's Theo. We're not putting in our best player <laughs> just further goes to show how stupid josh is right yes <laughs> like that was my thought process of how i was thinking because i was just like you know normal circumstances you think oh well it's only fair we got to vote someone in let's vote in the person that costs us yeah but to them they're making the calculation we can't put in theo that'd be dumb because mm-hmm. that's hurting our team yeah um meanwhile we gotta talk <laughs> about to josh josh so josh picks <laughs> Zach and Laurel to be in his tribunal. And yeah. earlier in confessional, when Josh had first been like, I'll be the speaker, Zach had said that he liked this idea because Josh will not pull any shady moves. That's That was his words. No shady moves. Close quote. Uh, so as they're going back into the house, I love this. Kyle grabs Laurel's hand and announces... <laughs> Laurel and I are now in a relationship. Come on, Laurel. <laughs> and, like, she just laughed. Like, she knew he was getting around. She laughs, and he's like, come on, let's go to my room. And then Ashley hells out, yes, for sex. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. Shouts to Smashley. I love Smashley. So we have so, the the little group confab with... Uh, can I ask you a question? Yes. I Could you, you see would. where this was going? At this... Uh, not at this point, no. Because at, at this point, I wrote down, I'm like, so is she going to want to put in Bear? Like, already, I'm already plotting out, like, what's Laurel's move going to be here? Because they're already setting the seed, and I'm like, one way or another, is she going to try to keep Bear in this game? I'll leave that there, okay. and we'll continue. All right. Okay? We go to nominations, as you said, right? And... I wrote down, this should be easy, right? Ask who cheated, and then they should be in. Yes. Or because it's Theo, one of your best players, do you just disregard it? And obviously they disregarded it. (laughs) And Bear jumps right in and says, Idris. And this just becomes a gong show. Like, we're seeing the Team UK just, like, fall apart, right? And Bear's right at the center of it all because he's trying to call shots. But meanwhile, the rest, the majority of his team isn't on his side, right? No. And this was obvious, too, when, at the start of the episode, when Joss and Rogan were talking about their alliance, their alliance is, like, six people. And, like, simple math, they're, like, like when they're listing them all off, they're, like, we're working with, like, so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And, and like, Bear and Theo are against us. I'm, like, that's, like, eight on two. Like, <laughs> like... Yeah, And Bear also should have maybe seen the writing on the wall when everyone, like, laughed him out of the room when he was like, oh, I'll be speaker. And they're like, nah, <laughs> that <sure>. ain't you. <laughs> like, you're not about that. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it's pretty quickly. They're arguing. And then, you know, by the end of it, even CT ends up voting for Bear, which might have been a shock. But CT brings up the point and he says you know what, he is one of our best players, but he's pissing people off. And at the end of the day, there's more important things. Like, you have to go to the fact of, is this person being too much of a disruption on their team? And Bear is a loose cannon. He is a wild card, and their team ends up putting in Bear. Did that surprise you? No. And, like, I know there was talk about Idris uh, going in. And, like, that was Which doesn't really make sense to me. No. Um, because what's your what's your thoughts on like people in their second season being so quick to call out rookies? I think it's ridiculous, and also, <laughs> again, the Brits, especially the Brits, should be focused on winning a goddamn competition. And yeah. Idris is a great all around athlete, and personality wise, it seems like he's really mild and like chill, and isn't like screaming and shouting at people. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, there's... Idris is, like, a good soldier, you know? He's what you want yeah. for these big group for sure. competitions. For sure. 
And, you know, I'm sure there's a bear army or something like that on Twitter amongst our listeners, you know. I mean, we've even talked about how Bears kind of winning us over so far this season. And I feel like this moment is one of the places where Bear earns himself a lot more clout in which they ask him, who does he want to who does he want to go against? And he's like, I'll go against anyone. And they cut to the tribunal crew and you can see the googly eyes from Laurel, right? Like she's like, oh, this is so hot. Like you could just sense that <laughs> off of her. And she even admits that much in the confessional, right? How much she's like, okay. And and again, I'm going to hold it again here. Right here, I see already what's going to go down. Because I'm like, she's digging this dude. Yeah. Right? And right there, I'm thinking of it from Bear's side. I'm like, ooh, I'd be extra motivated if I'm Bear. Because not only am I here to try to win an elimination and fight to stay in the game, but now I'm fighting to also stay for some laurel time. Yep. And that would be enough motivation for me, too. I'm not going to lie to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, when they're talking, I like yep. that Zach tells Bear, like, I thought you did great. Bear, you did not do great. Um, but <laughs> I'm also amazed at how readily they, like, the Brits have given up information because this is what the third time that it's been an American tribunal interviewing a British person who's going into elimination. Yep. Like I'm amazed at how fast they're like, here's everything you need to know. Like the, there's no leverage. Like if you think about it, their only leverage is like, who are you going to go up against? And that's a total crapshoot, right? Yeah, totally. Totally. So, uh, Bear says that Joss, Rogan, and D are clearly in an alliance, and that mm -hmm. Kaylee is probably in it as well, and that of course. Uh, Kyle and CT are on the edge of that clique, but Bear, again, to his credit, makes the fair point that like when it comes to nut-cutting time, when push comes to shove, Kyle and CT are going to be on the outside looking in. Like, there's your inner circle and then there's the people that you fuck with for now you know for numbers for numbers yeah. um and in confessional bear says that he wants to be known as the grizzly bear not the teddy bear and then he did the least convincing growl i've ever seen where he just sort of went <laughs> ah <laughs> yeah like, it, was, it was quite terrible has bear ever seen an actual live bear like does he have a sense of of what yeah. they actually sound like. It felt like um, Arrested Development, where no one knows what a chicken sounds like. You know what I mean? <laughs> Solid reference. Solid reference. Thank you. Um, so we move on from that scene, and now things start to get a little more interesting. This was a great episode, top to bottom. Oh, was, but things really start to get super interesting here, right? It was really enjoyable. It was a great episode. Uh Josh now, they're back in the house, they're in the room, and it's Josh, Wes, Ninja, Zach, and a quote-unquote sleeping Laurel. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and they just start going at Josh, basically just trying to see what Josh is going to do, where Josh's head's at. And Josh is backpedaling from what he said earlier. Yeah. And slowly more and more people come into the room. And Josh is clearly wrong here, right? Because it's a very simple conversation, right? It's just, oh, yeah, so we're going to put in Theo, right? Like, he's their best player. Yeah. And Josh was like, I don't know, not necessarily. And Wes is like, what do you what do you mean? Like, that was the whole plan. Like, the whole point of you joining and saying that you were going to be the speaker was to put in their best player. Like, what did you think that meant? And Josh says, well, there's lots of options. You know, it could be Kyle. It could be CT. It could be. And they're like, no, 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 no. And then slowly people start to walk in the room. And Ashley walks in and Wes says, who did you think we meant when we said their best player? And she's like, Theo. Yeah. And then was it Cam walks in afterwards, right? Yeah. And she's like, oh, Theo. And so Josh now gets super defensive. And he's like, why are you coming just at me? Why aren't you coming at the other people in the room? that are also in the tribunal. And Wes very calmly says, well, Zach already says he's putting in Theo, and Laurel's over there sleeping. Yeah. So 
that's it, Josh. I will say it's very, and this is all very calm. And for all the shadiness that Wes has done in this game, this is like nothing, right? Like this is all fairly straightforward. Just should be a normal, straightforward conversation. And the best part to me is Ninja saying, you know, I think like she says to him, Josh, I think sometimes you just overreact, you know, and you just need to calm down and whatever. And then Josh overreacts and leaves. Yeah. So <laughs> like, I will say, so there's a there's a brief moment where after Bear leaves, Zach, Laurel, and Josh are talking about it. And okay. Zach automatically says, we should put in Theo or Idris because there's clearly like a gang running the show on the Brits that basically just executed Bear. Yeah. We don't want to piss them off. And people talk okay. all the time about playing scared. And I'm never quite really sure what they mean about quote-unquote playing scared. But as soon as Zach said that, I thought, oh, that's playing scared. Like, Zach is scared of pissing off this gang of people. And, like, I was like, well, like, I see the logic of, like, maybe you want to, like, shoot your shot at, like, a Joss or a Rogan to, like, cripple that gang. Like, I could see an argument, but then I was like, when we, like, go to the scene with Wes back in sort of, like, the American bunkhouse, I was like, yeah, no, Theo's their best player. They're thinking, like, if you're thinking in terms of a team mentality, you got to take out Theo. Like, if you're thinking of the... Americans versus British mentality. You gotta take out Theo. And furthermore, that was... They hadn't been, like, explicit, but as Wes demonstrates, that was the impression that they all had. That Josh's job was to nominate Theo. Like, that was... That was it. And to your point with Ninja, that was so funny. How she's like, you sometimes overreact and he immediately like starts gesticulating wildly and going no i don't overreact (laughs) and it's i'm gonna say it right now because i think it's such an obvious parallel and you hinted at it it's amazing how much josh and bear are similar wow not in terms of looks but in terms of being so emotional like think about that british meeting we were talking about where they're like, okay. no, Bear, you're not going to be the speaker because you're too emotional and reaction and reactionary. And he stormed off in a huff. Like, how is that different mm-hmm. than Ninja being like, you know, Josh, sometimes you overreact. And he storms off and overreacts. Right? Like, they're very similar. That's interesting. Where, like... That's interesting. I think they're good competitors, but they're so emotional. And, you know, I don't think Josh talks shit like Bear does. Right, but like very yeah. similar, and Josh obviously does not have the same amount of game with the ladies that Bear does. But yeah, like I feel like if Josh was trying to emulate someone, it would be Bear. Like if he could be a competitor, it would be Bear in terms of like if Bear is insecure, he overcompensates with it by being just the loudest person in the room and peacocking all the time, right? Josh might try to do that, which I think he tried to do here, but he fails miserably because he never comes off as being actually confident. No. And that's his downfall. So he just even when you're making a dumb move, even if you're bear making a dumb move, right? At least he does it with such confidence that you're like, "Oh, okay." Like he fully believes in what he's saying right now, even though he might not. But Josh in this instance especially I don't even think that Josh was really mad at them. I think he was just more worried about the appearance that he was playing Wes's game. Even though that's not what's going on. Even though nobody thinks that's what's happening because it was a group decision. And in fact, I think it was Ashley was the one that brought up the whole point of, you know, putting Josh in. But yet he was so worried in this instance about looking bad on TV that he then just had to argue with Wes just to prove the point. I'm not doing what you say. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's all his argument was. Yeah, it's funny. He kept saying, like, you're speaking to me like I'm a child. But he was being really childish. For sure. Right? Like, it was very very much 
I mean, to play armchair psychologist. It really seemed like he was... Um, use your words now, John. It really seemed like he was <laughs> a child throwing a tantrum, right? Like, for Josh, yeah. the argument isn't about, you know, what is the best decision for him? What is the best decision for the team? It's mm -hmm. a, I don't want to be told what to do. Yeah. Like, that's basically yeah. what it boils down to, even though, as everyone is, at, like, no one's disputing the fact that he was made speaker on the condition that he pulled the trigger on a very simple, I don't even want to say a plan, just a task. Yeah. So, like, it was all lined out, and this is, this Josh getting mad here makes zero sense. But I think, I think it makes sense in the sense that it's, just his insecurities like it makes josh, sense yeah. psychologically for josh and like and I, you know what lt lt our friend lawrence thomas is gonna get mad at me if i don't bring this up all right because the reminder constantly for people who don't watch big brother and it's funny that ashley brought this up at one point in this game in uh her confessional where she says i think josh gets confused and thinks that this is big brother where you just say one thing and then do the other and it's okay and that's how you win and the problem is josh won big brother now just because josh won big brother we have to continuously remind people josh did not win big brother because he's good at strategy josh won big brother because the other people in the house were so petty they didn't want to give the win to the person who actually deserved to win so when they voted, they all voted for Josh. That's how Josh won. Josh was the worst Big Brother player ever because, as you can see, he works off emotions, right? Yep. He doesn't think things through at all. And when things aren't going his way, he just starts yelling and causing a scene. And as you're seeing now, things just weren't going his way in this conversation, I guess. And then he just makes a scene and walks off. And everyone else in the room is just left being like, hmm, except for Laurel, who is pretending to be sleeping. And at first I was like, why would she pretend to be sleeping? But then it all makes sense, I, right? For what it's worth, the like pretending to be sleeping move, so good. Like, good for Strong Laurel. Play. Strong play. That's a vet move, though, too. Oh. Someone who's been in a house trying to you know pretend like they're not listening to a conversation like that's happened multiple times to her for sure in her challenge career so you got to give her some points for that for sure strong vet play but she overhears the conversation once josh leaves wes is just going on about how like josh is an idiot and which is true josh is just he's expendable anyways like josh doesn't really matter he's gonna be out of here soon anyways and all of this is true, by the way, right? And Wes isn't saying it maliciously. It might not be nice, but I think it's correct. But either way, Laurel takes in this information and then way later on, and it seems like it's, this is when everyone else is asleep. There's not many people up. She finds Josh, relays this information to Josh, and Josh gets mad. Josh is now fired up, and Laurel drops in the plan says hmm what if we were to throw in Wes and Josh is so excited he picks up Laurel he's spinning her in the air he's like this is an amazing idea and he's in he is what do you make of this little breakdown here because I got I got I'm I got some serious thoughts here so I'm, I'm interested to hear what what do you think See, I'm torn. It is a big power move. Mm -hmm. And I th there's a lot that I like about it. It's... Okay. Wes, I mean, for sure, Josh is right. You gotta get them before they get you. Okay. I like that it, he and Laurel are thinking outside of the box. Right? Like, for sure, Theo is the best competitor on the British team. Mm -hmm. But with the way things are going and the Americans keep racking up those wins, they're going to turn on each other eventually. Wes, they know that Wes is going to come for Josh. Or it sounds like he is. You know, 
That's a big power move. I see that. The problem is it's not a move that's going to be made in isolation. And like I should add, there are people on the American team that are going to support this. Obviously, Johnny Bananas is going to be on board with this. And we later see okay. he is. <laughs> Obviously, yes. Jordan and Tori are going to be on board with this, right? So right there, you've got five people who are like, like if you count Laurel and Josh, who are going to sign off on this. I don't even think that Jor- Jordan and Tori are in on it. I think they'd probably be indifferent at best. Yeah, well, Jordan doesn't like Wes, right? So True. I just mean like, okay. I'm just... Fair, fair, fair. I'm just thinking in terms Continue. of consequences. However... There are a lot of people who are not going to like this. And for sure. I don't know how all the chips are going to fall, but there's something to be said for not making a big power move this early in the game. And like I wouldn't go so far as to say that this is going to put a target on Josh's back, but it's going to definitely like everyone knows Wes has an alliance that alliance is now going to be coming for you Josh and Wes is one of the reasons why the Americans have been winning competitions he's hands down their best swimmer yep. he will be good at uh, messing with the Brits he has the like intel from D like you essentially just flipped D to the Joss I, well, she was already in there, but the Joss Rogan Kaylee alliance just became in their way a little bit stronger, and you don't have mm-hmm. that like intel coming from the Brits anymore. You know, like it's it is a big power move, and in isolation in a vacuum, it works. But like, I don't think it's going to work out well for Josh at all. What did you think? I think this is a completely stupid move. And let's start here, okay? You're talking about who who benefits from this move okay we know that johnny bananas obviously benefits because he knows that wes is gonna him and wes play the same game whoever gets to shoot their shot first they take it right so obviously johnny bananas is gonna be on board with this if you think about all the meetings they had prior johnny's already saying oh we're why are we trying to pretend as if we're all on the same page when we're not so he's already been on this wave okay so we know how this benefits bananas Laurel, as I said, she's been planting. All these seeds have been there being planted where she thinks already she doesn't, she knows Wes and she's getting to know Bear, right? But she knows that Bear probably has a better chance at beating Wes than he does beating Theo. He doesn't have a good chance against Theo in an elimination. So her whole move was to at least try to throw a bone to. Uh, she also probably doesn't think that he could beat Idris or it'd be a harder battle against Idris, yep. right? After you just saw what Idris did in his elimination round. So her whole MO this entire time was, okay, well, I can't control Bear getting thrown in, but at least I can control who he's going against. And she's seen Wes enough to know that if it's a headbanger, chances are Bear would have a better chance against Wes than most other people that they'd be willing to throw in. And so that was her game the entire time. But again, so we know how she benefits. We know how Bananas benefits. How does this benefit Josh? It doesn't, it doesn't benefit his team. Yeah. Right? And <laughs> Like you're eliminating one of your own best players instead of trying to take out the other teams, one of the other team's best players. But this doesn't even benefit Josh. How does this benefit Josh at all? We also, I'm going to s- skip a little bit ahead, but we also see... That it pisses off Josh's friends and alliance members. For sure. Right? So we're totally going gonna, to... Let's just skip ahead to this conversation and then we can talk about the Brits. So yeah. the I, it looks like the day of the uh, actual elimination competition, the Americans hold sort of a vote. Not like a binding vote, but just like a conversation. Like who should vote for who. Yeah. And basically, they've narrowed it down to Theo or Joss. Mm-hmm. Theo, get, from the Americans, are telling the... Excuse me. The Americans are telling their tribunal, we'd like to see Theo go in. Yes. And Bananas makes a very fair and real point 
that this is a waste of time because the Americans are clearly divided right down the middle mm-hmm. and that this is just an exercise in people pretending to be on the same page when they're not. And it's a waste of time because they're clearly not. In yeah. Confessional, Kara says, here's the problem. Johnny has always been about himself and he's never been about any team on any season. So, like, Correct. Johnny is not <laughs> well suited for this sort of competition and, like, would rather have everyone be playing for themselves because that's what he's comfortable with. Josh, in this meeting, calls out Wes for his comments about firing him, getting rid of him. And um, Laurel and Bananas afterwards, Bananas basically is like, Josh, like, get out of the room. Like, you've said your piece, mic drop, go. Like, get out. Stop. Get out. Yeah. Laurel and Bananas are talking it over. She explains her whole plan about throwing in Wes. And Bananas loves it and of course bananas says at this point eliminating Wes is more important to me than winning a final <laughs> and at the same time Polly pulls yep. Josh aside basically to be like hey bro what are you doing <laughs> and yeah. Polly and Zach are telling Josh with Kara in the background although we didn't see her say anything to calm the fuck down that he's playing emotional, that he is, like, messing with their plan, that, like, what Wes was telling uh, Josh to do is what their alliance wants him to do as well. <laughs> like, yeah, Wes he's is emphasizing aims. this isn't Wes's plan. Yeah. This is our team's plan. <laughs> it just... and. Again, if you follow this pod, you know it takes a lot for us to say positive things about Polly and to big up Polly. Yeah. But I totally agree with him. And that's, I wrote that down. I was like, listen, I'm totally with Polly here. There's no sense to what he is doing. And even if you're that threatened by Wes, now is not the time. You don't know what the next upcoming challenge is, but you know what? Most of them have had to do with water so far. Yeah. And it's still a team challenge. And so why would you eliminate one of your best players to benefit who but the other team? It makes no sense. And again, this is a thing that made no sense to me, right? Okay? Mm-hmm. If you If Bear comes back, right, that's an L for your team because you haven't done – you didn't eliminate any of their better players. You didn't eliminate anyone off their team, right? And if Wes comes back, he's clearly going to be pissed, and now he's going to be pissed, and the rest of your team is going to be pissed because you sent him in for no reason, risked one of your own best players going in, and now your team's going to be at odds. Yeah. Like, how does this make any sense at all? I don't understand. I, I need someone, anyone, to explain to me how this makes any sense at all for Josh. We've explained why it makes sense for Bananas. We've explained why it makes sense for Laurel. But the biggest thing too, because even if you want to take out Laurel and be like, hey, Laurel, like, why are you not going at Laurel? Because she's obviously just trying to keep Bear because she likes Bear. Cool. At the end of the day, Laurel is willing to go into the, if she has, if someone's going to call her out and go into the training ground, she's going to prove it and defend herself. Yeah. Josh can't do that. So Josh is going to take an L. He's not a good competitor. So how does this make sense? If you have to defend it, you're going to lose. Josh is a moron. You and I are on the same page, but we have a listener comment. Okay. Your mother, who on Twitter, her avatar, okay. her uh, handle is X's and O's, XOXO, says... Okay. Keeping Wes when you know how he plays is just foolish. Wes played a bad strategic game this season and a bad social game. It was the best move for Josh, but not for Team USA. The US team has way too many egos and beef with each other, so if they lose, they are so stupid they still won't put him in. And the UK also won't put him in. Josh is worried about his game, not theirs. My response is, I, I understand what your mother, that's her handle, <laughs> I understand what your mother <laughs> is saying, but I think one of the big things on the challenge is that there are always consequences for your actions. I mean, that's like life, mm-hmm. too. But 
And an easy example is that Theo keeps bringing up to Rogan that Rogan gassed out a year and a half ago. For sure. If Josh wants to be building a career on this show, which I assume he does, Mm -hmm. people are going to be watching the tape and they're going to be thinking what you and I, Sheldon, are thinking and what I think some viewers are thinking is this is a dumb decision and that he's a super emotional player. And you just touched yeah. on this. You and I are not big Polly guys. We're not fans of Polly in particular. Because, if I can speak for you for a second, we both think that Polly plays emotionally, right? <coughs> yep. So if Polly is saying, like, hey man, you need to calm down and be logical, that should be a big sign that you're being too emotional. Like, if Polly is like, bro, you are being totally irrational here that's telling you something and also i need to point out as much as i've been praising him this episode johnny bananas is also being very emotional like if he's at the point where he's saying i would rather see wes eliminated than win a final i'm sure it's hyperbole but also like that's also emotional irrational thinking like, but I also think that Bananas more so is just trying to avenge going out so early in the last season. Yeah. And I think that he knows that for him to win, it'll take some pretty fucked up shit going down, right? Like, he has a massive target on his back. So as much shit as Bananas will normally talk, he's here for, like, the smaller victories in terms of, like, okay, I made it further than last year. Okay, I made it further than Wes. Okay, I made it past the team round. Right. There's all these little notches that will do Johnny Bananas well, as opposed to actually winning, because at this point, I think the targets on his back way too much for him to to win a challenge at this stage. Right. Yep. The part that will still not make any sense to me ever is even if you're Josh and you think Wes, you okay, you hear from Laurel that Wes says you're a waste and you're you know you're just a number and they'll get rid of you when they can even if you believe that to be true okay let's say that's true and do you think Wes is trying to get rid of you next week do you think Wes has the power to get rid of you next week no because there's still a team competition yeah (laughs) so what are you worried about right now taking out Wes like you did nothing to help yourself right now you did nothing to help your team in fact all you did was hurt your team this is the dumbest move ever and no one will be able to convince me otherwise because josh here all he did was the complete opposite of what they set out the plan to do which was to take out one of the other team's best players and instead all you did was take out one of your best players yep what so let's go over the nuts and bolts um bear goes into the proving ground yeah. And, oh, you know what? Hold on. We are skipping past the whole section because we got caught up in this Josh stuff. Yeah. Um, Theo, oh, yeah. who is clearly drunk, oh, yeah. c- confronts Rogan and, to a lesser extent, Kyle to ask why they put in Bear over Idris. Theo gets mad when Rogan suggests that he can't handle his beer, even though it's clear that he cannot handle his beer. <laughs> and then Theo brings up Rogan's gassing out again. And it doesn't look that heated, although the scariest security guard I've ever seen on this show gets involved. <laughs> and Theo, in his anger, shouts at D, which pisses Rogan all the way off. And I love that well, this is where just the studio gangsterness comes out, right? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, this is where the studio gangster comes out. Because, like, now I got to act tough because he said something to the girl to my girl so now i gotta pretend like i'm gonna fight him yeah he's never actually gonna fight him and to be honest i'm not knocking him for that because i give rogan credit for being really calm while theo's being really drunk and annoying in his face so i'm giving rogan credit for how he acted in this but i just like to bring up the fact that he only really started to act up because he thought he needed to pretend to act up because he yelled at d he also started to act up once like security had things well in hand the good old hold me back yeah hold me back (laughs) classic classic shit 
Um, I sorry, I wanted to say, <laughs> CT just like shows up out of nowhere. Probably <gasps> he was asleep, but he goes, "Are you guys gonna have a fight?" <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. It was so good how he said that. It was great. It was great. So um, we're at the proving. But their group. argument is their argument is pretty dumb, right? Oh, it's super dumb. Like Theo's like, I've never publicly said that I think I'm the best, but do I think I'm the best one on the team? Yeah. It's like, um, you're publicly saying that you're the best right now. <laughs> and also, like, it clearly comes across that you think that. Yeah. Rogan's You Can't Handle a Glass of Pinot Grigio. That's a good line. <laughs> I was just like, what is going on right now? I was just like, this This episode has been great <laughs> on so many levels that, like, this whole argument is going to get, like, two minutes out of this podcast. And this argument was actually pretty funny, but that's okay. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Let's, yes. Let us keep it moving. So we go to the Proving Ground. Bear, of yep. course, is already going in. Mm -hmm. um and he asks tj if he can speak and tj is basically he doesn't say it but he's basically like i don't think i could stop you (laughs) (laughs) and bear calls out wes of course which makes me wonder if laurel was in his ear and told him like hey this is coming down the pike it would really help if you just called him out Mm-hmm. And yeah. Wes is like, nah, not today, brah. <laughs> like, I'm, no, you worry about yourself. <laughs> Zach votes for Theo. Laurel votes yep. for Wes on the like pretense of like, well, Bear wants it, so why not? And then Josh yep. votes for Wes. Polly says in confessional that he feels completely and utterly betrayed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I totally agree with Polly. I can't believe I'm saying that. But yeah, Wes ends up going in. He has to take the walk of shame down past his own team <laughs> into the elimination. And the elimination firing squad was pretty cool. But I mean, essentially, it was just what do we always call it? Uh, is it Powerball from uh, Yeah, it is American Powerball. Gladiators? Yeah. Um, and the thing here, right? Like, Bear wins pretty easily, but at one point, for the first time in a while, I agree with Turbo, because in the second round, Bear wins the first round really easily, right? Picks up the ball, gets a good bounce, and scores really easily. Second time around, Wes has the ball, and Bear is just elbowing him, basically punching him. He's not even trying to get the ball. Nope. And Turbo is like, I'm sorry, but at some point, I think I'm just letting the ball go and I'm going to hit him back, Mm -hmm. and I'm getting kicked off the show. And I wholeheartedly agree. Like, what kind of strategy was that? And I was just stunned that Wes was able to keep his composure and just hold on to the ball for that long because Bear was just dropping, like, elbow drops on him. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. I thought it was fucked up, man. I I didn't like that. I'm going to be honest. I didn't think that was cool. I didn't like that, but at the same time, Bear's just trying to, like, he's fighting. He's he's staying in the game. And it depends on who the person is that he's going against that he thinks he could get away with it. And guess what? He did get away with it. And Bear ends up winning. He's talking that talk. And I think the Bear that we've liked so far this season is going to be gone now. Uh-oh, yeah. Right? And he's going to go back to the Bear that we met last season that is now feeling himself he's over the top he's gonna be talking mega shit and yeah i mean josh just eliminated one of his team's best players um as you were speaking we had more listener conversation lawrence thomas tweeted i'm just giving play by play on this now replying to your mother saying i completely agree with your mother Wes overplayed his hand okay. and exposed himself way too early. However, it is very early in this game, and we can't forget one important thing. Josh is trash. <laughs> he brings <laughs> zero value, none. Won't win them a single thing unless he gets lucky. Wes isn't what he was, but they lost a smart, capable player for Josh? It's like keeping Markel Fultz instead of Hoodie Mellow. 
This is exactly why they lost uh, War of the World Season 1, and Bananas needs to remember that he's washed and can't win like he used to. Straight fire I from mean, LT. I agree. Here, like, this is so baffling to me. Because if you're going to call out Wes for saying he played the game way too quickly, all he was doing was talking to people. Right? Like, don't get... And I agree. Wes did show his hand way too early. He did expose himself. Cool. But you back pocket that for later on in the game. And, I mean, if Josh is even around later on in the game, this isn't helping him stay longer. It's not like someone's going to be like, you know what? We should keep Josh because he put Wes into the elimination. Not even Laurel's going to do that. Right? <laughs> like, who... Who is siding with Josh? Does he think that Georgia is going to stick up for him and be like, no, let's not throw in Josh? Like, as soon as the teams go away, Josh is done. Yeah. It might even be before that. If the U.S. lose, they might put Josh in. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I need someone to tell me why this is a good move because I don't get it. I, I'm not as down on the move as you are. But I don't think it, like, I still don't think it's a good move for right now. And I'm very interested to see how the dynamics work out on the Americans now. Because I can't imagine this is going to, like, go well for Josh. Like, I can't see, like, sure, off the hop, you know, he eliminated a competitor. But how often do you want to actually get your hands dirty? I think you're also just opening up a can of worms now where everything is free game on your team. Yep. So, like, next week if they lose or if, again, they're in control, they just start taking shots at whoever they want now just because. And, again, Josh, how do you win from this? Putting in Wes was a no-win situation. And that's the part that makes no sense that anyone will be... Like, how did Josh benefit from this move? It's it's also so emotional. Like, like I said, I think there's a lot of parallels between Josh and Bear. And Bear, it's held against him on his team that he's such an emotional person. Yeah. Right? No, that's fair. It's the, Josh is going to have the same problems. Right? Like, yep. now they're going to go, like, let's let's think about how the next episode of the challenge is going to start. They're going to go back to the house, right? And yeah. Johnny and Jordan and Tori and Laurel, to various degrees, are going to be patting each other on the back, right? But yeah. Ashley and Zach and, to a lesser extent, Leroy, uh, Polly, Kara are all going to be saying, Josh, what the fuck was that? Laurel, what the fuck? <laughs> right? Yeah. Turbo and Ninja also. Right? Like, Ninja is going to... Turbo's not a big West fan, but Ninja was also... Like, she was the one that told Josh he overreacts. Right? So, like, it, the it's not fixing the divide on the American team at all. But it's also not helping Josh. No, and it, you're right. It's not helping Josh. It's, it's so stupid. Um, did you have a line of said episode, I John? did. I'm so glad you asked. I did have a line of the episode. <laughs> um, when Bear was really upset and like sort of having a little sulk to himself after his team wouldn't make him the speaker, they all were sort of like talking and like consoling him and he's like people don't understand that i have emotions and feelings which is first of all hilarious because bear we all know that you have emotions because you have them all the time but <laughs> i loved that wes sticks his head in and goes hey do you guys need my help to sort things out no no <laughs> bear call me call uh, me bear I, that killed me that was hilarious it's pretty good it's pretty good uh, what was your line of the episode? Well, you already said it. I did. Uh, I did want to give a shout to Rogan, though, which was pretty funny because he remembered his combination number, which was 6810. Yeah. Which he says was easy for him to remember because 68 is one less than his favorite number, which I'll just say, nice. 
And if you get it, you get it. And he said, 10 is his rugby number. I was like, all right, cool. I'll give you, I'll give you that one, Rogan. I'll give you that one. You made me chuckle. I have to ask, Sheldon, who killed it for you this week? Do you know what, John? I'm going to let you go first. Oh, no. I'm going to let you go first. Oh, I always base my decision <laughs> off of who you went with. I don't know if you're going to agree with who I went with. So I, I feel like I'm going to I'm going to pass it over to you because yeah. I'm going to reluctantly go with Bear. Okay. Simply for the okay. fact that he won. He won an elimination. He now has mm-hmm. One more win over Wes in an elimination competition than Johnny has over Wes. <laughs> and, you know, like, he got it done. He got his wish. He did. I mean, there is he a did. lot of stupidity and a lot of stuff I can't sign off on this episode. But I'll give him credit. Bear. Okay. That's fair. You killed it this week. It's a lukewarm you killed it. Who killed it for you? (laughs) You know what? I like what you said there. A lukewarm you killed it because I kind of feel the same way. And because I felt the same way, I'm not picking an MVP. I'm picking an LVP. Oh! Because, Josh, you did not kill it at all. You are the LVP of all LVPs in terms of least valuable players. Let's let's run this down for a second here, okay? Yeah. First, you cheer for Georgia openly to expose your alliance for absolutely nothing because now your team is mad at you and you're still not getting in with Georgia. We haven't seen any progress there. So that was a big zero. Then you volunteer to be the speaker because you're bragging about how you'll put up the other team's best players. And not only did you not do that, instead you put up one of your team's best players. You did the exact opposite and you can claim that you took your shot before west took his but let's be serious west isn't really taking you in you're at the bottom of the ladder anyways because you suck at challenges and you're super annoying and all you did was piss off your team and you know what if there were a few people on your team josh that you know were maybe unaffected by you they didn't mind you you didn't really bother them that much well guess what now you bothered them too But most importantly, Josh, you are the LVP of all LVPs because you found a way that in a team game where you are playing on a team, you made the move of making the other team stronger by making your team weaker. That's a tough task. But if there's one man to do it, it's the idiot, Josh. Wow. Hot fire. You, my friend, did not kill it. Oh, I love it. I love it, Sheldon. Where can the good... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Most of all, you don't have strong ties on either side of the house. Nope. So it makes no sense. Who's defending you now? Nobody. If Laurel does this, she can go in and defend it in an elimination. Bear talks a lot of shit, but when he has to go in, he can defend it in an elimination. Josh, like, what do you do? It's true, and it sounds like his closest ally in the house is Polly. They both said they're friends outside the house. They're friends IRL. Yep. What did Polly say after this happened? I feel utterly and completely betrayed. Smart. Good job, the, Josh. The only man that could make me side with Polly. That says something. Is Josh. That says something. That says something. Where can the good people find you on social media? people I'm, I'm begging you okay i know some people dislike wes they think he played a, a a crazy game and i understand all that but please hit me up on twitter at shell alexander or on instagram at sheldon alexander or in the comment section wherever you find this podcast on itunes soundcloud and on youtube like and subscribe but hit me up in the comments because i really want to know i need someone to explain to me maybe even josh himself hey explain to me why this was a smart move for josh i get why it was a smart move for laurel i get why bananas would be behind it but why would josh be on this this is the dumbest move ever ever um you can find me on twitter and instagram at j chidley hill please don't message me i don't care uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You can message me. You can message me. I just... <laughs> you can message me. I, I just had to go for the cheap laughs there. <laughs> Could I ask you something, though, before you, you fully wrap? Sure. Wes is gone now. Yes. Thoughts on Wes this season? L- last thoughts on Wes this season? It was... I have to say, it was not his strongest performance. I think that no. Hart, he made, in my mind, two critical errors. Maybe three. Mistake number one was that I think he overextended himself by reaching out to too many people before the show even began. Like, I think you got to keep a tighter circle because he was like, he had what, like eight people in his alliance? Or like he, he was on, he was in conversation. That's probably the best way of putting it. He was in conversation with eight people. Thank you. I think sort of the ideal number. There's probably some math to be done in terms of like number of competitors, but I think the number you're looking for is around four. Is your ideal alliance size maybe five? Yeah. Um, I think he his biggest mistake was going straight to Joss when he learned that Rogan might be on the block, mm-hmm. or, or maybe he needed to more emphatically say to them do not like like be cool about this i don't know maybe we yeah. maybe there was edits that we missed but he definitely misplayed that situation and then like the third error i think was that he fell for laurel being asleep yeah. like you, you that was not a quiet conversation that they were having having um especially josh's also, part so like he should have and like also who sleeps like that so he probably should have <laughs> been like kept I don't know. He could have he should have played a tighter game, I think. I'm gonna give Laura I'm gonna give sorry, Polly and Kara credit because the Wes's mistake there as well, as I think the rest of Team USA is not reading Laurel well enough to understand what her move was gonna be to try to keep Bear in this game. Yeah, that's true. Right. And being unaware of that. And I think as much as I just railed against Josh and Josh is a moron, Wes left himself open to this. Yeah. And that's a risk that you make when you when you play the game like that, you run the risk of exposing yourself early and Wes got burned. But still one of the best players in challenge history. Still always great to see Wes on the show. Glad to have him back. Always makes things interesting. And if anything, he started the game early. Right. Yep. And. Are you not entertained? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, oh, man. Uh, until next week, this was You Killed It. You killed it. Except for Josh. 